Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. You may have seen a recent community post I made with the screenshot of my new Legends title that I got from the Incursions. And you may have noticed a little bit of a teaser there that I did go back to Savage Squad SSX1, which was my old home alliance the first time I did Tier 1 Masters War uh, for most of like about a year ago and the year before that. Um, I decided to go back. I had a lot of friends there. I sort of missed the competitive edge. But before we get this war started, I do want to give a huge, huge thanks to the Very Angly Cows Coalition VACC, who was my home for the last nine months. It was an absolute blast. I made some great friends. It was still a very competitive alliance in terms of alliance war and the types of uh, war clears that they were doing, and just some wonderful, wonderful people that helped me enjoy the game and find what I liked about it again. So I'm back in BG3, uh, which is DLL's group. He's an amazing planner, and I have six fights this war, and it's kind of cool um, that I sort of picked up right where I left off, because when I left SSX, I was um, Apocalypse and Spider-Man 2099 were actually two of my first rank fours, and I used them a ton in war. So in this war, I do get to use both of them. And we're also going to see White Magneto, who's my newest rank three. I finally, finally pulled White Magneto, actually take a fight, which is very on brand for BG3. So this first fight, uh, you get punished for having the Defender Purify. This is the new path seven. I've never taken this path, but because it's Apocalypse, there's no way he's ever going to purify us. And the only thing we really need to worry about is the Planetary Endurance. You know, if we accidentally get cornered or give him too much power, um, the flourish buffs are already pretty strong. So we really, really need him to throw this special so that we can continue the fight. Um, my plan was basically to give him a little bit of power, bait a special, and then just deal with like alternating specials with him. Uh, because I did not want to have to block too much to give him too much flourish because we can't really hit his block because he'll go unstoppable and smack us. Another thing to note is that I am running the uh, double edge mastery, which is the bleed side of that tree. I'm doing that to make Apocalypse immune to bleed and not have to deal with the constant health loss of the poisons. And essentially, that's going to help us in a, in a fight coming up. So I already had the Mutant Power Back Boost on. And we're going to use White Magneto, who's unduped and rank 3. He's more than just a pre-fight champ here. He's going to actually take this fight against Dragon Man. And this fight, there's no way that he can purify anything because it's not in his kit. But of course, the reason a lot of people place him here is when you knock him down, it puts an armor break on him. And whereas that seems like it's something that would benefit you... In the case of Dragon Man, if he has an armor break on him, you're going to take some direct uh, degen damage off of him. So, um, talking a little bit about masteries again, I am not placing a pre-fight here because, first of all, I want to get one back and have more for the rest of the war. But additionally, I want to actually use the pacify mastery to continue to reduce his ability accuracy. So, the reason Magneto's so good here is that he does have like the same amount of ability accuracy reduction as Reg Magneto. Um, if you basically throw special twos with power back boosts, that's the way you usually use him in war. And you can see that the power gain, uh, after we, we parried to get rid of it, it is gone forever, which is the thing that happens with ability accuracy. You can just get rid of the timer. So that is when we place the armor break. Uh, we place two degens because the node, I learned this from DLL's war video from last season, that it checks for that armor break before you actually uh, get the degens going. So that's why I was able to get two degens. And then one more special two doesn't quite kill him, but that's enough. So I've, I've seen that fight work with a rank four. We had a rank three, but I was running, you know, double edge. So we had way more attack than a normal rank three would have. And he's immune to bleed. And that's the only fight I had to take with him. So I knew I would take some degen damage, but if I didn't make any mistakes, it wouldn't be enough to kill me. And that was the first time I've ever used white Magneto in any content because I've never had the six star. 
star and he's fresh rank three. So like I've literally never quested with that guy. And uh, we took our first fight with him and it went very smoothly. He basically turned off everything that we needed him to turn off. And, you know, the armor break degen damage wasn't so bad. So now um, this is notoriously one of the most difficult nodes on the map and almost everybody places Nick Fury here, especially because he's had the, you know, tactic for the last few seasons. Um, so I'm just mentally preparing here. I am, you know, he will heal pretty much back to full because of his awakened ability, but I didn't want to risk not being at 100% health. So I did pop one potion. You can see there, we're pretty much max boosted. I am going to do power start one um, because we're the goal here is basically to cycle special twos. Uh, but the one thing about this assignment that I was perfectly okay with, like DLL and, DLL and I and like other people like Dreamin, who has taken this fight a lot, we all chatted, you know, did we want White Magneto on the team because I can use the pre-fights a lot later, he was able to take that fight, or do we want Cable? But since we don't have Cable, you know, we only have the two genetic memories. So I, I was trying to get to my special two before he threw a special one, but of course... He threw that. That was probably based on the fact that I did medium medium. Uh, but here he was, he was pretty friendly throwing that special too. So now when I saw models for this video, um, Apocalypse was getting all the way back to his special two. But of course, because you know I have a rank four and not a rank five like some people have. And also because I only have the two genetic code, I'm not going to be doing as much damage. Um, things are going to start to get bad here. Um, now... Uh, the reason he didn't go red there is because of the power focus two. So everything kind of worked out there. Um, power focus two highly reduces the amount of power he gets between two and three bars. So um, a couple things to note that you know we did get rooted, we did get hit because I didn't have that heavy punish down. Um, but the reason he didn't go red was because of power focus two and also of notes, um, as bubble shield just triggered, I was not keeping track of those bubble shields, but fortunately because it triggered there, it means it won't happen for the rest of the match. The reason I'm running, um, double edge is because I wanted to be immune to bleed before this fight even started because the tiny bleed that you get from double edge is not that bad. Uh, you'll just take like, you know, 5% health or something. Um, as we get pushed to a special three, he finally throws his special two. We can, we can do some damage here. I'm, I'm hoping the special three kills him, but I'm assuming it's not, but it'll give me enough power back to throw one more special one. Um, but what we don't want to have happen is him to throw, you know, four light attacks at us and that huge light attack bleed be the first time we get a bleed on us and we take all that damage. So that's why going into this fight with a bleed immune APOC is so much safer and why it's a good idea to run half recoil like that to get the bleed immunity, get a little bit more damage. And as we saw there, it was enough to get through the fight. I also run inequity, so any of those debuffs that were on him were helping reduce his attack. Uh, that's probably how we survived. The boosts, the recoil masteries inequity things like that it just feels good that we were pretty set up for that fight even though it went awry uh, we were good to go so now later in the night um, you know they banned Omega Red who is one of the best people for the new path 7 but of course Apocalypse is also fantastic um, this is a node where if they purify stuff off of you then um, you're going to get uh, unblockable and also we have to deal with the planetary endurance and all that. Um, I'm backing out just to make sure my pre-fight is sticking. There's not really a huge reason to use a pre-fight here, but we had a ton of white magnetos on the board and I still had three pre-fights because I won that fight with him earlier, which means that we're gonna be able to use four total pre-fights in this war, which is fantastic. It's one of the reasons you use your pre-fight champions something I learned from these BG3 folks. They love actually fighting with Odin, White Magneto, etc. War Machine. Uh, but this fight is pretty trivial uh, because we're turning off the node. And essentially, he does have the flourish buff. So, you know, obviously, if we push him to a special two or something and we get hit by it, that's going to hurt. But Crossbones is usually pretty friendly about throwing that special one. 
And I think I'm just going to throw my special ones because I know it's going to be plenty of damage. We're not running power back boost here because the fight, you know, is not that dangerous. I throw the poison, which is going to help reduce the amount of willpower healing he does. And then on this one, I do a light ender to get the weakness just for a little bit more damage. And, you know, that's pretty much going to get him down. And we never even got Apoc to his four genetic code because this is the last fight that we had with him. And, uh, yeah, so Apoc did his job. That pretty much trivialized the fight. Uh, no issues there. And now we're going to speed up the camera because, you know, this is, this is part of war at this level is maximizing the champions you're using. For the rest of this war, we're gonna be using Spider-Man 2099. Um, I was really excited to get to use this guy in war again. It's been a while. And you know, one of the discussions we had was, do we want the anti-venom synergy or not? And for this one, we decided that White Magneto versus the Mordo that I'm about to take was probably a better choice because it has uh, Make a Stand, the protection node on it which means you know, being able to like parry and heavy and get him down that way to take off the protection is a really safe bet. You can just throw on an invulnerable so that if he does get to a special three, you'll be able to tank it. And then that sort of takes care of not starting with the wither that you would get from anti-venom, if that makes sense. So we are gonna place this. As I said, we have two more and we have two more fights. And then just making sure that it sticks. And I want to take these two fights together. We're going to throw on some science boosters. You know, this is my first war back in tier one. So I'm not really taking any risks. I mean, I'm only running a 20% boost here because I'm fairly confident. But I am throwing those power back boosts on just because, you know, why not? It, it could help me in especially that mojo fight. So we're just checking our boost. I wait for the uh, absorbing man to go down. And now we're going to take the final two fights of this war. So this again has the you get punished for purify and that you have to knock him down to do damage. He's not going to be able to purify anything because we have the white magneto pure um, pre-fight on. So even if we accidentally... You know, if we didn't have that, if we parried and tried to punish the, the stun, I think that counts as a purify. I'm not 100% sure, but we've taken all of those variables out. We parry heavy to start. I have an invulnon, which means, you know, if he gets to a special three, it's fine. I did some heavies. Those exhaustions add up to like 45% ability power rate reduction. So it will help a little bit from him going red. Very friendly there, it throws the special two. Until we get to our special two, we're just kind of playing this like normal Mordo. There we um, canceled out the power gain. And I just throw this to get the wither going already. One of the issues with Mordo is he gets very passive, so it gets kind of tricky to dex and keep the wither duration on. But when he is passive, it is helpful to just like hit the block very easily there. We're already up to 12 ruptures. Hopefully we can get some dexes in, and we do. So now he's not able to gain any power. He does have a protection on, so we need to knock him down at some point. Our wither is probably going to fall off, but the fight's in control. We still have the um, full ability of our um, invulnerable boost if we needed it. And, you know, he's got a ton of ruptures on him, so the rupture burst basically took him down. Very safe fight there. Um, Miguel is still one of the best at those mystic power game problem fights. And honestly, they made 7B easier than it used to be because there's no like aspect of evolution. There's no kinetic transference anymore. There's no spites, you know, things like that. So, you know, it, it's not that bad. It was just basically a Mordo that I had to knock down every once in a while. And this final fight, we've got one more mini boss. It's the Mojo on the Limber and Hard Knock Life mini. And, you know, I've faced Mojo as a boss for a while. Like, he was a very popular boss when Spider-Man 2099 first came out. When you fight him there, of course, though, he ha you have, like, the true strike. Or, or, like, back then in war, you had, like, that true strike thing uh, where basically, like, even if you got clobbered by him, you would survive the fight. On this one, we do have to deal with brute force if we get too passive. So that means... Miguel is not going to do his normal thing in war where you just only dex and hit the block. I mean, that's not necessarily the only way to play him, but we see that a lot. 
because then brute force will hurt. We have class advantage. I'm trying to think of all the factors here. We have class advantage, so the brute force will do less damage. That's how the node works. Hard Knock Life can still make blocked hits hurt and can still make parries fail, but Limber will not be a factor. So we start off by baiting a heavy because I, I don't want to get like a million Hard Knock Lifes on me this early in the fight. Um, very friendly baiting the special one. I did practice the special two decks a lot, but my plan is to block the special two. Unless if I'm very low on health and at risk of dying and I need to dex it, that's sort of like a strategy in war. Is like if you know it, this is my last fight of the war. If you know it's not going to kill you, it's really not that big of a deal to just block it. Um, even with a couple hard knock lives on me, which are going to happen eventually. So he's being pretty friendly. We're keeping the wither up. The wither is still important in this fight because when he fulfills prompts, he gets a little burst of power once he gets like three of his little charges. Um, so now he's at special two. I just have to be careful to not send him red. And right there, we block it with three disorients and we still have a ton of health left. So to me, that was worth not risking the decks. If I had like no health left and it was like do or die, I would have dexed it. But you know, in war, you don't always have to nail your dexes. It's not about having the showiest looking clip. But anyway, that is my return to SSX. I did six fights, got six solos, a couple mini bosses. Feels really good to be back. Definitely a little stressful um, getting back into things because it's been so long for me. Uh, but it did kind of feel somewhat familiar using Apocalypse and Spider-Man 2099 like that. Uh, I think I said too many 99s there, but 2099, that's it. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Uh, make sure to check out the other SSX videos to see what the result of this war is. It's very tight at the moment, so I actually don't know who's going to win. Uh, but congrats to BG3 for a really good clear today. And that's going to do it for now. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.